seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Are we okay with sound now? Is it okay? Okay. When I was a kid, really little, like kindergarten, first, second grade, my mom used to sit down on the side of my bed uh, when it was time for me to go to sleep. And we would say the Lord's Prayer together, and, uh, and she would sing a song of some kind or other, usually from church. And she usually just sang the melody. She didn't sing the words. I don't think she remembered all the words. She'd sing something like this. She'd sing, Somehow, in the midst of the song, the bullies at school would fade away. And the way the letters and the words refused to come together into sounds and meaning didn't seem to be quite that important anymore, even though I had a learning disability. It was okay. It was going to be okay. at least while I slept. God is like that. That's what God is like. Like a mother singing to her children, like a mother singing to you. And I think that's kind of what Jesus was trying to say when he says in the gospel lesson for today, I am the good shepherd. Just a few minutes ago, Lily led us in reading one of the uh, beloved and well-known Bible passages in all of scripture. For the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not starve. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be drowned in the depression that seems to stalk me. I shall not be consumed by the busyness that roars around and within me. I shall not be a slave to the fears that haunt me. God makes me lie down in green pastures, leads me beside still waters restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Right pathway. In the gospel lesson for today, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Elsewhere in the teaching that he gives us here in the gospel of John, he says, uh, that he calls the sheep by name and they hear his voice and they follow him. So we've heard the last few weeks, Mary Magdalene, uh, he calls Mary Magdalene by name and she recognizes him finally uh, and after he is risen from the dead now. And uh, he stands outside of Lazarus's tomb and calls Lazarus's name. And Lazarus comes out of the tomb whole and alive. Jesus will call your name someday and you will come out of your tomb. Jesus calls all of us by name out of our tombs today as well. Leads me in right pathway. Now I need to let you know <clears throat> that all those right pathways, those paths of righteousness, are not always going to lead through lands of... Uh, 
rainbows and pastel unicorns flying through the air on tiny little bitty wings, right? Not always rainbows and roses. The next line in Psalm 23 is, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Now wait a minute. I was supposed to be walking in the right paths. See, in paths of righteousness. That's not supposed to lead through the valley of the shadow of death, is it? Jesus. Oh, man. So, <clears throat> the teaching that Jesus gives us in the gospel lesson for today comes after one of the miracles that he does in order to show us what God is like. And the miracle that he does, you've heard about it before, he gives sight to a man who is born blind. And the story goes like this. Jesus and his disciples are walking through the temple precincts. They see a man who is begging, and he can't see. He's been born blind. And uh, Jesus' disciples ask him, they say, Jesus, uh, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Because... Uh, Obviously, somebody has to have sinned. Somebody must to be, have done something wrong for this man to suffer a punishment from God. Otherwise, the way God works in the world wouldn't make any sense. Right? Of course, the disciples have forgotten the book of Job, which clearly states that the way God works in the world is not going to make any sense. It's beautiful, but it's not going to make sense to us. Jesus completely sidesteps their question. He says, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but rather this man was uh, born blind in order to show the works of God. Now, we can take that in two ways. Uh, on the one hand, we can say God planned ahead of time that this guy would be born blind and go through a few decades of suffering so that Jesus could come along someday, give him his sight, and show everybody how great he is. Or, we could understand that God allows bad things to happen, hard things to happen, difficulties to happen, challenges to happen, so that we can work together. God allows some of us to be born without the ability to see so that the rest of us can be blessed with another way of looking at life where we don't see with our eyes, but we see with our hands and with our ears and with our souls if we're willing to listen. Some of us are born with different kinds of intelligence or whereby we may not be able to read or whereby we may not be able to put on a fancy dress and have a debutante ball, but we sure know how to love. Maybe God allows difficulties to come and even pain so we can share one another's pain and one another's grief. And that's the glory of God. So that the works of God can be revealed. It doesn't make it make sense. It's still there are things and circumstances that don't make sense. But maybe we can read it that way. Anyway, Jesus takes some dirt and he spits in the dirt. And he makes paste out of the dirt and he puts it on the man's eyes. says, go and wash in the pool of Siloam. And the man comes back and he can see. And everybody is astounded. Everybody is amazed. Everybody's talking about it. This guy, he was born blind and now he can see. Some people say, no, it's not really him, it's somebody else. And everybody, no, 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 that's the guy. And they're arguing about it. They bring him to the religious leaders of the day. And the religious leaders are going, this is not good. They say this is not good because Jesus healed on the Sabbath. Now Jesus is reinterpreting God's law. And that's scary. Because the religious leaders of Jesus' day, it means that they don't have control over God. They don't define God. They don't dispense God. They don't control God. God is wild. God will do what God will do. This is very bad. Jesus healed on the Sabbath. And some people still don't believe that it was really the man. So they go get his parents and say, yep, that's him. And then they get the guy back again and they say, what happened? And they said, I already told you what happened. Jesus came, he put mud on my eyes, and now I can see. And they say, oh, this guy, no. 
Oh, Jesus is not good. We know Moses. We know Moses told us not to work on the Sabbath except an emergency. This wasn't an emergency. So this guy, Jesus, we don't know him. And the man who was born blind says, this is a wonder. This is amazing. Never since the world began has it even been heard that a person born blind was given their sight. And you don't know the guy who did it. You don't understand. You don't see the guy who did it. Only God could have done this. God must be with Jesus. And the religious leaders of the day say, you are a very bad person and throw him out. So when we walk in paths of righteousness, there might be times when we are revealed, when our eyes are opened, when our blindness is taken away, blindness we've had since the day we were born, and we see things that we had not understood before, understand things that we had not understood before, and we speak up about it, and somebody's going to tell us, you're a very bad person, and throw us out. Maybe even religious leaders. It can happen. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And Jesus comes to find the man who's born blind and now sees, just like Jesus comes to find us. And he says, do you want, do you know who it is that brings the power of God into the world? Do you know the Son of Man? And the guy says, who is it? And he says, the one speaking to you. And the man born blind says, I believe, I trust. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Can you say that with me? I shall fear no evil. Let's put a we on that. We shall fear no evil. Yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we shall fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. Jesus is with us in the midst of the valley of the shadow of death. Jesus comes to us. He came to us at the cross right there in the depths of our difficulty. And Jesus went right through death into life and he leads us through death into new life. Every day. And when we die. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The shepherd's rod that the shepherd would would drive away the wolves with. And when the sheep got too close to the cliff, the shepherd would go, no, no. I said, no, no, get away from the cliff. You know. Jesus does that with us too sometimes. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I am so safe that I can sit down and eat in the presence of people who would wish me harm would like to see me dead. Maybe God prepares that table for both me and my enemy so we can sit down and talk with one another and understand each other and hear one another's stories, where we come from, what we've experienced, why we take the positions we take so that even if we disagree or even work against each other, we can at least see each other as human beings. You anoint my head with oil, my cup God's ridiculous, preposterous, out of bounds, embarrassingly abundant life. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yes. It's going to be okay. This is what God is like. Like a mother who sings to her children. Which mothers have all kinds of different ways to show their love to their children. If you sing, great. If you don't, it's okay. You don't have to sing. 
God is a good shepherd. Thanks be to God.